Hi, hi everybody. Thank you for being here uh, early in the morning. So I hate to start with the bad news, but uh, transportation as you know it is broken. You saw it, and you experienced it. Even when you came here, you saw the mess that we created. As humans, we haven't conceived uh, our transportation system, our backbone of our society to be functional, to be efficient, to be human. And it starts when you buy a car, right? That's what they sell you. You're there. The wind is sweeping in your face. It's beautiful. The cities are empty. There's beautiful roads. No, no one is in there. You're with your loved one. Powerful. It's an amazing world, right? And then you exit the dealership. That's what you get. But this is impacting our lifestyle. This is not the life we were conceived to have. Bumper to bumper, minutes, hours, and we live our life like that. It should be a better way. Let's look at the general picture. You know, if you think that Paris is bad, it means only one thing. You've never been in China. I mean, this was the mother of all traffic jams. There's been stuck in traffic for 11 days, guys. They, I, I don't even want to, to think how they went to the restroom. I, I, it's just nasty. But this is Beijing in a good day. Because Beijing in a bad day looks like this. People just run over him probably, I don't know. But you know, these problems, if you think it's far away, okay, where was the longest traffic jam in history? Raise your hand if you know it, please. Nobody, that's very cool because it was in Paris, <laughs> Paris Lyon, ladies and gentlemen, 1980, 176 kilometer. You think was nasty, China was nasty? That was nasty. I don't know who, how many of you remember this, but it has been impacting a lot of uh, people. So let's look at the other side of the coin. For example, welcome to the other cities. And if you think about going with uh, um, using some other uh, way of transportation, okay, let's use the metro. Beijing, welcome to Beijing, guys. You're trying to exit, but basically they push you back in. <laughs> and this is London. If you think it's only Asia, that's what's happening in the big and the most extended underground in the planet. It's every day now. Sao Paulo was there two weeks ago, and the scenes are hysteric. Why? Well, it's not like that everywhere, I have to admit. For example, Japan fixed it. Uh, they've done a great job because they, they've been creative and they find their own unique way to actually fix the problem. They have pushers. It's real. It's happening every day. They push you in the, <laughs> in the, <laughs> in the car. This is Bangladesh taking the train. Do you think it's far away? Well, it's not because this is the situation that is happening in China. It's, it's going to... Um, it's in India, it's going to impact everything. Why we haven't thought uh, it through? This system doesn't scale. And the problem is embedded. If you look at the airports, 70% of the operation we do at the airports, uh, you can do it even before you arrive there. Why they're keeping us stuck there, looking at the carousel where your, your baggage is probably delivered somewhere in Botswana. And, and, and well, I have a good news. They fixed it because now your lost luggage can be purchased back in one of the amazing comfortable shops that they open all over the world. 11 open right now. So you can buy it at a 70% discount. It's a bargain, you should go there. It's really a good thing. What does it mean? It means it is embedded in the system. They created a failure to actually re-inject the, into the economy. So if I would tell you tomorrow is the last day of your life, you would be pissed. You would be disappointed, right? You start to think, oh my God, it's the last day of my life. 
what I should do. I mean, every single minute would count. Uh, I, I would love to embrace my, my, my children, my family, and it's so important, right? Well, if you live in one of these cities, you live in one, two, three years less than was expected. And we are becoming numb. It's normal. It's not normal. We, they are stealing our life, 10 minutes here, half an hour there, one hour there. And this is the most important thing we have. We need to do something because humanity is impacted. Now, what if I would tell you that there's a possibility to go from Lyon to Paris in 22 minutes without all this mess, without being stuck in traffic, without having a, this human transportation system that is made to be sustainable, to be efficient, and to be sustaining the throughput of humanity for the next 100 years. Well, it would be too good, right? How many of you doesn't know what the Hyperloop is? Please, raise your hand. We're among friends. It's OK. One, two, three, four. Keep your hands up, please. OK. Security, remove these bastards from the, <laughs> the fuck is going on. I'm joking. Let me show you a, a little video. In 2013, Elon Musk published his vision for a sustainable, rapid mass transit system called Hyperloop. I have a name for it, name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. Busy with his other ventures at Tesla and SpaceX, Musk issued a rallying cry to the best and the brightest. There are some companies that are, that are forming to try to make the Hyperloop happen. I, I encourage them. I think that's that's great. Uh, I'm super focused on Tesla and SpaceX and to, to, to you know small amount on Solar City so that that basically completely uses up my my brain. So what's Hyperloop? Kind of like a Jetsons tunnel? It's something like that. Yeah. You imagine a capsule filled with people. You put this capsule inside the tube. You create a low pressure environment inside the tube. So you have no resistance. And it's moving very fast from point A to point B. So the capsule very similar to an airplane that goes in high altitudes uh, can travel really fast with very little energy. Is the main trick to it uh, the vacuum and the fact that there's no friction? Is that the Correct. main reason yeah. why it makes it so fast? Tesla founder Elon Musk proposed this new technology called Hyperloop, and it's being developed right now in Playa Vista here in this hangar behind me. So when Elon published the document, he just drafted a possible way to achieve this. Two months later, uh, my business partner, Dirk Alborn, a genius German entrepreneur, uh, took this document, published in our website, the Jumpstart Found, and did a call to action. There was a great project, a great idea, and Elon actually said he wanted someone else to take it on. He wanted the community to make this happen. It's the first company that used crowdsourcing to solve one of the biggest problems of humanity, that is transportation. They have to work at least 10 hours a week, and we give them in exchange one stock for every hour worked. And we have been like overwhelmed of requests from engineers from all over the planet. Mm. Uh, there were people from you know NASA, Tesla, SpaceX, uh, yeah. Boeing, MIT. We want to give the, uh, our community that's supporting us the possibility to own parts of, uh, of the company. So we are creating the biggest crowdsourcing project in the planet. Big headline of the day. Hyperloop's the chief operating officer, Bipop Gresta. The transportation technology startup believes that the Hyperloop will be cheaper than high-speed rail in the country. Take a look. The business model that we developed is not based on tickets only. Tickets can be used uh, as a way to regulate traffic. There are so many new ways to monetize users. We are able today to announce at the World Economic Forum. It will change the way we live. It's possible today. It's based on existing technologies. Is it visionary? In 30 years time, will you and I be sitting on our rocking chairs going, well, we talked about it then and they did it. Traveling by Hyperloop is going to be the future. They're, to, they're making this. So let's look at the possibility that this system can unleash. We have an unprecedented possibility because for the first time we can actually transport people and goods at the speed of sound without 
having the same problem that the other transportation has, that it's at the expenses of the, our resources, our economy, and all the other facts. So the hyperloop has been around uh, quite a little bit. You know, the first examples were in the last century, but only recently the real design of the hyperloop took place thanks to a genius that is Elon Musk. He published a white paper and he said, I'm too busy to do it, but there's this system. It was uh, while that uh, humanity had this possibility, why anybody is doing it? And me and my business partner were so crazy to actually think this was doable. But we thought we didn't add all the answer. And this was too big of an effort to actually create uh, a normal company. So we said, you know what? Let's do a call to action. Let's ask uh, humanity to come together to help us solve this problem. And what happened after has been amazing. We haven't created a company. We created a movement. Uh, aside of the top engineers that we hired as the mainstream headlines and the uh, engineering committee that is actually integrating our uh, Hyperloop, there's a movement of people. There are more than 900 people right now working from 42 countries to actually contribute at least 10 hours a week in exchange of stock options. And this is magic. They said biggest startup in the planet. I don't like that definition. I think we are the biggest effort that humanity did to put together the best minds in the planet to solve one of the biggest problems of humanity, that is transportation. That means that we can solve all the problems. We have been just published by Harvard Business Review, and they're teaching our model at Harvard. And the amazing thing, they're using it to look at how to solve energy, food, housing. We have the technology to do this. I invite you guys to actually start up a business that will solve one of these problems, just putting together the best minds that are in this room or in your contact list. You don't need money, you need brains, and that's what we are raising. That's the top companies that answer to this call. We have the top uh, listed company in the world, Atkins, one of the top engineering firm, Carbures, uh, they are building our capsule, uh, labeled, they invented the vacuum pump, and I can go on forever, but I have a limited amount of time. Even His Highness, Sheikh Fala bin Zayed Al Nayan is now on board our company, is the local sponsor of our Abu Dhabi project. 70,000 hours has been contributed from the beginning. How can you possibly raise the amount of money normally to actually raise this amount of brain. It's not possible. And we opened an Apple of Academy. We are now spreading this into universities to actually uh, extend it with students and professors from all over the world. And we're looking to build uh, freight and, and uh, cargo. Now, how does it work technologically? It's very simple. The technology that you need to build an Hyperloop were already there. The only real innovation that we brought is about levitation. This system was uh, invented in the 90s by Lawrence Livermore Lab, and we acquired the exclusive technology that can revolutionize transportation forever. Using magnets to move and elevate trains is not a new thing, but this method hasn't been efficient enough to make sense on a large scale. The primary reason, simple. A vast amount of energy is required to power the system. 20 years ago, a team of engineers from Lawrence Livermore Labs began the work that would solve those problems. For more than two decades, they'd researched a full-scale functioning prototype. And in that time, they discovered how to arrange magnets over an aluminum... So they just tell me I don't have a lot of time. So this is the track that you saw in uh, Lawrence Livermore Lab built by General Atomics. In a while, you will see our uh, prototype track in 2015. The concept is that you have a series of magnets that can actually levitate without using any electricity. We use a neodymium magnet configured in an all-back array. I'm sorry for you, the translator. <laughs> I don't know how you translate this. But it's basically a simple thing. You remember you were a child, and there were uh, opposite attracts, and uh, the um, uh, opposite side re repel. Well, uh, the same side repel. Well, it's the same thing. You put the capsule on a laminate of aluminum. When it's steady, it doesn't do anything. But as soon as you move it, the capsule levitates without using any electricity. And that means that it's not only cheaper and and faster than anything else, it's also profitable. So for the first time, you have a system that doesn't need subsidies. All the other systems, including high-speed rail, needs constant subsidies of the uh, taxpayers, us. 
So no, nothing on the ground makes money in the earth. Now, we've been uh, through several challenges in technology, but the, the biggest innovation that we introduced is that the combination of renewable energy that we are using is capable of generating up to 30% more energy than we produce. How is it possible? We have invented uh, something revolutionary. No, we just combine uh, a new uh, series of um, renewable energy and the energy that you consume is less than you uh, can produce with the real estate that you acquired. So in Ottawa, that is not typically where you, you will go to take sun, right? We can do 15% uh, more energy. And we will publish now a, a feasibility study in Abu Dhabi. This is the incredible uh, uh, difference between high-speed rail, metro, and an envelope system. In average, uh, it can cost half or one-third of the normal uh, cost. But this is not the point. It can cost also double. But if you never recoup the investment like high-speed rail, it doesn't make sense. Hyperloop can recoup the investment in eight to 10 years. That means that after that period, the Hyperloop can pay back the state. So it's like a subsidy is in reverse. We'll pay fees to the states. And we're designing it in a, in a very new way. We have amazing designs that can take advantage of the same right of way. When you read these articles against the Hyperloop, oh, it will never be built because the right of way, you take 20 years. Well, we have the right of ways. It's our highways, our rails, and underground. So we are looking to develop a system that doesn't require new right of way and scale up. You can put up to nine uh, tubes on the same pylon. For now, we design a seven version that has the capability of transporting 600 million people a year. If uh, Forrester is right and we grow at 9 billion in 2050, there's no point in the planet that we cannot serve with the Hyperloop. And we're looking to design something that makes sense. The pylon can host endangered species. We are looking to develop uh, vertical gardens. There's a series of technology that we can acquire to actually make it comfortable. This is my team revenging on building, uh, on showing that uh, the Hyperloop is comfortable. They put me 1G. And then for a, a little bit of fun, they put me at 5G. <laughs> That's me inside the capsule, OK? <laughs> These are our testing facility. So what does it mean? It means that in case of emergency, you can have a stop in 6.4 seconds. It's like a roller coaster. You see my face is not particularly happy to have that. But you can save the life of the people with a, a seat belt. In six seconds, you stop, and then you can evacuate from the emergency door. So it's like having an airplane without the problem of an airplane. It's like 10 times safer than anything invented. Because the science works on your favor. If you open the valves, there's an explosive recompression, so the air comes back, and what happens? The capsule slows down and stops through a counter of its effect. It means the air will stop the capsule, and through the reverse of the uh, linear motor, you can gently go back on the laminate and exit in the me middle of the tube. So very safe, more uh, exit door than the uh, underground, and we have a new system to actually bring you to new uh, realities. You can look out. This is a screen, another windows. And where do you want to go? You want to go to Italy? You want to go to, uh, uh, I don't know, Australia? You want to go in space, underwater? You want to go uh, in the times of the Roman? We can bring you there. It's not only a fun way to travel in the future. It's a new way to monetize users. There's, we, we think there's other ways to monetize and, and without using a ticket. Is it a pipe dream? OK, watch out, because today we have a big thing going on. 20 uh, countries are negotiating routes with us, and eight of them, we received 100 million investment, eight of them have signed deals to actually go into commercialization. We are the only company. There are other companies. We were the first one. And because of that, uh, and because we have a, a, a newest technology like the passive levitation, some countries assign deals to actually build Hyperloop. And today we have a big announcement. So after four years of development, uh, we are now ready to announce uh, the start of the construction of the first Hyperloop of history in Francazal. Guys, you, be, you have to be very excited because I am, yes, you can applaud. <laughs> Not to me, but to the scientists that work on this. 
We are particularly excited. You know, France will be the first country to have a full-scale Hyperloop. The tubes have been ordered. We are now uh, a new structure. Frank Casal was the first to actually answer to our call. They gave us a big building, 3,000 square feet. Uh, we are now starting the, rec the restructuring. In the road that you see, I will show you better. Uh, oh, this is the, our new office. If you go to Frank Casal, the turret uh, temporary is the new office of Hyperloop. And uh, we have a track in construction right now. We are looking to uh, be um, putting down the tubes in February. So we already ordered, they're coming. And uh, I know that I, I finished the time. There's a little video spelling by Cas Frank Casal. We don't have time, we have. No? Okay. It's a pity because it wasn't exclusive. Uh, we signed with India, another big uh, project, but the real um, uh, surprise was after six months of feasibility study in the Emirates, in Abu Dhabi. And I leave you with this because this was the longest and most extensive study that's been conducted by the Hyperloop that allowed us to go into commercialization. So there are people predicting the future. We are building it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Join the team. Join the team. <laughs>